Hi guys, so I have done this video about a hundred times, or I've like started this video a hundred times, but then, I don't know, Reagan starts screaming, or like I've been sick, so like I had to like clear my throat a thousand times, which I just was like, this is weird. Um, so anyway, we're back and the lighting is banging right now at 6.30 in the morning. Um, so welcome to the Car Chronicle. Sorry about that sound, so maybe this isn't the best time. Okay, let's do this. Okay, welcome to the Car Chronicles. So, I used to do the Car Seat Chronicles on TikTok, which was the only time when Reagan was an infant. It was the only time that I had like silence in my life or like any time to create content, if you will, um, was on my way home from work. She would fall asleep in her car seat in the car and I would sit in the driveway while she was asleep back there and I would record whatever fitness, nutrition, education content. So that was the Car Seat Chronicles on TikTok. I'm giving it a reboot on YouTube, the Car Chronicles, um, because the car is still pretty much the only time that I have free time. Um, so, the 2024 IFBB Pro schedule came out and let me tell you guys, it is extremely disappointing and underwhelming. <laughs> like, that fitness list is exactly what I just said. Underwhelming and disappointing. Um, and so there's two layers to it. And I'm going to kind of talk about both. And by the way, the Car Chronicles is like going to be a different series than my prep series because this isn't really a prep video. This is just like me talking. It's just a vlog, whatever. Okay, so it's disappointing for the fact that it's just like, it's just not a lot of shows. In the calendar year, it is, I want to say nine shows not including the Arnold and the Olympia because I don't count those as like opportunities for the athletes to get on stage. Like you can't just decide you're doing those shows. So I don't count them. Like obviously those shows are options if you qualify, if you're invited, if you apply, whatever. Um, but I just don't count those three shows as opportunities. So I'm calling it nine, nine shows in the calendar year. Um, which is just crazy when you think about pretty much every other division except for maybe women I don't think that women's bodybuilding has like a ton of shows um but like all the other divisions I mean okay not all the other divisions I don't think men's bodybuilding gets as many shows either but actually I think they do anyway I haven't looked at the calendar enough to I, what I do know is that men's physique because my husband's a men's physique competitor what I do know is that men's physique and bikini and probably classic to be honest um get nine shows a month maybe not every single month like that would be doubling up every single weekend like that's a little bit extreme but I would say most of those divisions get five to seven shows a month at the minimum um so for us to have nine in an entire calendar year just sucks um now we always have a small schedule so it's not that big of a deal but it's like Chicago Chicago was on our list last year it's not this year Legion was on our list last year it's not this year Toronto was on our list the year before it hasn't been for two years so it's like we always don't have that many shows but now we're like we're just getting less and less and less and I get it as a promoter like trust me it's not lost on me that promoting is a business like as someone who eventually wants to be a promoter um I understand that promoters are in this to make money and they have to spend a lot of money to host these divisions like uh, in addition to all the money you have to spend to host a show venue you know paying for judges paying for literally everything um, to host pro divisions you have to pay a sanction fee which I think is like five thousand dollars and then you have to pay prize money so that's like another four thousand dollars depending on the division and fitness let's say it maxes at four thousand dollars so you're talking basically ten thousand dollars per division per pro division that you want to host so it's like why are they going to spend ten thousand dollars to have fitness if fitness isn't going to show up in any kind of numbers or if fitness isn't going to make them any money like so last year i think chicago had seven fitness girls which is fine like i feel like 10 is kind of the threshold um but wellness only had nine like it's not like that's that's another thing that's like kind of bothering me about it it's like wellness is still getting opportunities and wellness has a very very small shows like uh sean ray the weekend of ben Weeder had three wellness girls and one of those wellness girls is a fitness competitor so it's just like frustrating because i understand the promoter side of it but also as an athlete i'm like well what like so what do we do we're just sol like is our division getting phased out like we have people killing their bodies 
to get on stage. It's not easy to get on stage for fitness. And not that it's easy to do any sort of bodybuilding, but what I'm saying is that adding that routine round adds an entire layer to what we put our bodies through that the other divisions don't have. Ashley Kotwatzer, or whatever her last name is, the bikini girl, um, she's a high, high level bikini athlete, right? She's top three in the world. She's a previous Miss Olympia, if I'm not mistaken, and she's the most winningest bikini pro of all time. Again, if I'm not mistaken, I think these things are true. She competes all year long. And like, what? what's the, like, what does that mean? I'm saying that you can't do that in fitness. <laughs> you can't even compete you can't even be bad and compete all year long in fitness. Fitness is that hard on your body. Like, you could be a bad bikini competitor and compete all year long. You could be a bad figure competitor and compete all year long because, like, you're not necessarily putting your body through the ringer because, like, you're not even that high level. But the fact that a very high level, which means she's she's living in this, like, lean state. She has this lifestyle of bodybuilding. The fact that she can compete all year long and be healthy and be good to me, shows you exactly the difference between what she's putting her body through and what someone like Missy and Whitney, who literally got injured on the Olympia stage, and that can happen to anyone, but like, let's be real. Nobody in any other divisions is getting injured on the stage. How many people got injured this year? Missy, Whitney, on stage, Amanda, on stage, Layla, on stage. I think there was somebody else at another competition that got injured on stage. So it's like, not to mention all the people, I think Ariel said she broke her toe at the Olympia. I don't know if she was on stage or if she was doing warm up or whatever, but like not to mention all of the other things that people are dealing with. And so all that to say is like, it's not as easy as just saying, Hey guys, just compete more. I can't, I am 36 years old. I'm barely competing right now. Like I've already said, this is probably going to be one of my last year, like my last year or two competing. Um, so it's like, how else do we make it more financially worth the investment for promoters. Um, and there's, I mean, I don't know, Elaine, she's the fitness competitors guide. She had posted like, you know, make sure you thank these promoters and, you know, be loud about it. Like, you know, a lot of people like to do X weeks out. Like they don't want people to know what show they're doing, but I've seen a lot of promoters talk about that. Like you guys want more prize money, but you don't want to tell anybody what shows you're doing. You don't want to help the promoters make money by telling them that you're going to be there. Like, and I get that too. I'm not really an X weeks out type of girl. So but she's like, be loud about it. Thank the promoters. Talk about these shows. Like, tell people what shows you're doing. Tell them to buy the live streams. Like, all this stuff. But it's just like, I don't know. It's just like, it feels like a catch-22 because there's not opportunity. So then people are like, well, then why am I going to compete in fitness? Like, lots of competitors this year were like, okay, well, I'm doing wellness this year. Um, someone even said, if there's like no chance for me to make the Olympia, which that's my second point. She's like, why am I going to stress myself out by doing this routine? Like, if I'm going to compete for fun, I'm just going to do wellness. Um, oh, I'm going through this light. Sorry, everybody. It was yellow. But it was close. Um, so, it's a catch-22 because less opportunities means less athletes want to compete. Less athletes competing means less opportunities. So, it's just like, okay, well, I got caught at the next yellow, so I guess it doesn't matter. Um, so, it's just like, what do we do? It's frustrating. So, that's the first part of the frustration. The second part of the frustration is just like my own personal frustration with trying to get to the Olympia. And that's like what I started talking about, talking about when I was saying like, that girl was like, well, if there's like pretty much no chance for me to get to the Olympia, why am I competing in fitness? And I, someone had mentioned like, well, getting to the Olympia shouldn't be your only goal. It shouldn't be your only reason you compete. I'm like, it's not the only reason that I compete. However, it is the only reason that I compete as an IFBB fitness pro. All of the other things besides the Olympia, all of that other stuff, I can get out of powerlifting. I can practice personal discipline. I can get the satisfaction of being better than the last time. I can do all of those things outside of IFBB Pro Fitness. The reason I compete in IFBB Pro Fitness is because I have a chance to compete at a high level, the Olympia. If I really don't have a chance to get to the Olympia, I can compete in powerlifting. I can compete in figure. I can compete in wellness. I can do millions of other competition stuff. I could start CrossFit. I could do all sorts of other things. I'm not going to do CrossFit. I don't like CrossFit. But I could do all sorts of other things to scratch that itch. The reason I compete as an IFBB fitness pro is because I want to go to the Olympia. So when they're taking away opportunities, it's like, it's just like, okay, so what's the point of this? Now, the shows that I think I'm going to compete at were not, you know, I wasn't Chicago and it wasn't Legion. So I'm not losing an opportunity there. But 
competing at the Olympia or qualifying for the Olympia is not just skill. It's not just effort. It is also strategy and luck. And so when they take away those shows, that does impact my chances because now people who were banking on putting those shows in their list, now they might be pushing themselves into a show that I was doing, right? And I know there's people that are gonna be like, oh, well, if you wanna compete at the Olympia, you gotta be able to beat the best anyway. Yes and no. Like I said, there's strategy involved. Like, and I don't think it's wrong of me or wrong of anyone to also use strategy as part of their calculation of how they're getting to the Olympia. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, if you think about last year's Olympia, and this is like not any shade, if you think about last year's Olympia, Michelle Gales missed that qualification by one point. And she missed it to Corinne, who statistically, Michelle is a better competitor. She was ranking higher. If you take their, if you look at their rankings around, like over the season, Michelle was consistently ranking higher than Corinne. However, Corinne's strategy was to compete more often. You compete more often, you have more opportunities to earn points, and guess what? She clinched it in points. I think that that is strategy, and I think that Corinne deserved to be there because she also used her strategy. Like, I don't think it's I don't think it's fair to say that like someone like Corinne who relied heavily on strategy that wouldn't deserve to be at the Olympia. Like, yes, skill, effort, and strategy slash luck. So I'm just like, it just sucks because that's a key piece of it for me, I think. Um, is like who's going to show up to these shows um, and this kind of like messes with that now I'm still going to like obviously do my best because I do think that I do have the skill and I do know that I'm going to put in the effort um, but it's like my level of effort doesn't matter if Jody Bohm shows up now Jody's not going to show up because she's retired after the Arnold but like I'm just saying like Maybe some of these shows that some of these other people were going to do. I'm just going to use, I'm going to use Tamara as an example. She got second at Chattanooga. I lost to her. Um, she's not someone, to be honest, that right now I think that I can beat. If Tamara was like, okay, well, I'm going to go to Chicago and Arizona, whatever. And now Chicago's off the list. So she's like, well, I have to compete earlier. I'm going to go to whatever show. And she shows up to what I'm competing at. Well, now that that like reduces my chances, right? Okay, I'm at work, I gotta continue this later. Guys, it's been literal weeks since I filmed like that first, all that stuff, it's been weeks. But I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't uploaded this video and I know that I wasn't done. So, okay, so I was talking about if I show up, right, or if Tamara shows up, and I actually don't know if it's Tamara or Tamara because they always say Tamara, but I've like convinced myself that they are wrong about how they're pronouncing her name. I've never heard her say her name. So I'm gonna say Tamara because that's what I think it is. And then I'll go check Instagram afterwards to see if I can find her saying her own name. Anywho, she shows up to a show that I'm doing that maybe, let's just say, maybe I was projected to be the winner of that show. And then she shows up, like, the chances of me winning that show are very low, right? And again, I know people have mentioned, like, okay, well, you got to be able to beat the best, whatever. But if you think about it like this, like, think about playoffs. Like, in playoffs, there are plenty of teams who their matchup determines how far they get in playoffs, even if their rankings are different, right? Like, that's how it works. That's why they seed these teams so that their matchups try to, like, advance them. Again, it's all strategy. So it's like, let's say the top 10 people in the world. Like, top 10. And let's pretend it's black and white. Like, let's pretend it's not bodybuilding. It's not subjective. Like, there's the top 10 people in the world. And number five shows up at a show with number three and number two so number five doesn't get in but number 15 shows up at a show and nobody in the top 10 is there so number 15 wins and goes and number five never qualified it's like that's kind of like I don't know if that makes sense but that's like kind of how I feel it's like I feel like I could and should be in that group of people that qualifies but I also feel like losing these opportunities starts pushing all of these higher ranked competitors all to the same show and so now again some of us that might be in that top 10 but like in the bottom half of it now some of us are not going to qualify but there's a possibility I mean there's really not a possibility because everybody's like there's so few shows that everybody's probably going to be like every show is going to have the really high level competitors but it just I don't know how to explain it it just feels like not it, it feels like it is it there will be very high level 
past Olympian competitors that don't make it to the Olympia. And again, like you can't really like setting goals like that is always like a tricky subject, especially in a subjective sport like bodybuilding. Like, I mean, if you look at last year, like, I mean, just, just think about like me, Kristen Pope and Stephanie Jones. Kristen and Stephanie both beat each other at least once, I think. Kristen beat me once. I have never beat Stephanie Jones. I think I've only competed against her once at the Olympia last year, but I've never beat her. She's beat me. But then at Chattanooga, I beat both of them, even though Kristen Pope had just beat me three weeks before. Like, so anyway, all that to say is that it's going to be past competitors that don't qualify and I shouldn't make it a goal to qualify because I'm not in control of that but that doesn't make it any less frustrating that it doesn't make it less frustrating right like knowing I shouldn't set that as a goal doesn't make it less frustrating that it's like not a high possibility I guess is what I'm trying to say so anyway all that to say is you know I don't know I feel like like I said before two weeks ago <laughs> five ten minutes ago in this video um it just feels like fitness is getting phased out and this is like a, an aside now I watched another video um Sean's Couture she is my suit sponsor she does all sorts of she does like a live video every week she did a video on the schedule bikini has 85 shows <laughs> 85 85 we have nine and I think like 45 of their shows are out of the country <laughs> 45 international shows, 40 U.S. shows, and we have nine, and one of them is out of the country, which is just wild. And, and when I say out of the country, I mean out of the continental Americas, right? Like there's there's Van, there's not Toronto, there's Vancouver, which is not in the U.S., but it's like travel-wise, it's similar, right? Like I'm closer actually to Vancouver than I am to Chattanooga. So when I say international, I actually... I don't actually mean outside of the U.S. I mean outside of like the Americas. Um, either way, it is what it is. Prep is starting soon. So like we're all going to be fighting for these spots. And I obviously would love to qualify. I wanted to qualify at Ben Wiener. But I also, and I've mentioned this before, and this will really be the last thing because it's kind of on a side subject now. I also know the way that I felt after Chattanooga like I didn't win but I was so 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 proud of myself like I had tears of joy and I literally couldn't stop crying every time I talked about it for a week I cried about it because I was just so happy and so proud so yes I want to qualify but I think ultimately like if I just like really bring my best I think I'm gonna move on from it I think I'll be okay <laughs> but I also I also do think that my best like my best highest level of potential and capacity I do think is good enough to get to the Olympia now again it's really just going to depend on how the chips fall and like again where the strategy and luck falls because just because I have the skill and I put in the effort doesn't mean you know right that that I'm going to have the right luck as far as who shows up to the shows that I show up to um, and what judges are on the panel and who likes me right because that's another part of it I know I just said this was the end but this is really the end that's another part of qualifying for the Olympia it's like if the judges like you. Noemi, at Vancouver, the judges did not like her at all. She got last in the physique round. And I don't remember what she got in the routine round, but a week later, two weeks later at Chicago Pro, she won the physique round. She went from last in the physique round to winning the physique round. And her physique looked exactly the same. She got second at Chicago to Jody. She beat Sarah at Chicago, who had just won Van. She, Sarah won Van and Noemi got last, or not last, I don't know what she got, but she didn't win. I'll tell you that. Sarah won. Noemi, don't remember what her overall placing was, but I know she got last in the physique round. Then two weeks later, they both go to Chicago. Noemi wins the physique round. So she beats Sarah in the physique round. And she beat Sarah in the routine round. She beat Sarah in both rounds. And Sarah ended up getting third. So anyway, all that to say is like, again, strategy and luck. I also want to put myself in front of judges that I know like me. Um, and so anyway, there's just like a lot, there's a lot of stuff to consider. 
Um, but yeah, we're 20 ish weeks out. I don't know exactly what the ish means because we haven't like fully settled on my schedule. We will settle on my schedule um, when we see what my body looks like. But anyway, like I said, this video is not about my body or my prep. It's about the schedule <laughs> and how I feel about it. So yeah, that's it guys. This, I, this video should have been up a month ago, but here we are.